Hello YouTube. Today we're going to take a look at how to make a loop like this. Now originally this started out as this, but after receiving some very fine sound design, I was inspired to remake this into this. Now we're not going to go through every single step and every single keyframe in the process, but we're going to go through the general process. So if you're smart and crafty enough, which I think you are, then by the end of this video, you should have a pretty good idea of how to make something like this or even better. So let's get into it. So starting with the diamond, it's very simple. It's just a few shape layers. Let's take a look here. The top and bottom are just shapes that I drew. Nothing special about them. And then to get the rotation, I just animated shapes across with a few keyframes that kind of had a little dimensionality that looked like they went around the bend of the diamond. So I did that for the top and bottom. And then to repeat that, I applied an echo effect. You can see over here. And then I've just went in my timeline down a little bit and found a good repeating point. And yeah, this is our looping diamond here. So now that we have our loop area defined, you can just go to composition, trim comp to work area, and then open up our main comp where we want our diamond to live, drag our diamond loop in here and then right click this layer, go to time, enable time remapping. And you can see this last frame, our diamond disappears. So let's go to the one frame before this and make a keyframe and delete this last frame. And then we can alt click on this stopwatch and type loop out. And now we can just drag this as long as we want and our diamond loops. It's beautiful, beautiful looping diamond. Great, moving on. Now you might think that there's a lot of complexity behind this beautiful hand, but it's actually about as simple as it gets. Just five lines for the fingers and some shapes for the palm. I put anchor points at the base of each finger and then just rotated them open and close and did some little path animations to wiggle around. And then to get this nice taper effect, I applied a preset from Jake Bartlett at School of Motion, which you can download for free, link in bio. And this gave me a nice control over the widths and stuff of the fingers. And then finally, just animated the hand in and out with a null object and added some little gradient shadows and little touches like that to bring it all home. The next thing I did was I needed to add null objects to each finger so that I could attach the lines. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's find out. So with one of our fingers selected, we need to open up the path property. And with path selected, we open up window, create nulls from paths. This is a script that's been included in the path, past, path, past few versions of After Effects. And I wanna choose nulls follow points. Boom, boom, boom. This makes nulls that follow each one of the points on your path. And now for this, I only needed the null that was on the tip of my finger. It's the only one that was important to me on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the bottom three and then repeat the process for my other fingers. So now we have all these null objects that are following points on our fingers and there are endless opportunities we could do with this. You can see if I make a shape, 
and I parent it to the null object that's on that finger, it's gonna follow it around. And if I move this path here, I mean, I don't know why I'd wanna do that, but if I wanted to, it's gonna work. Let's see what else we can do with this. So now I went ahead and I put in my diamond and now we need to make those connecting lines. And there's a few ways we could do this. One is we could do a variation of creating nulls from paths. So if we made a line, you know, we could do points follow nulls. And now we have a line that's following null objects. And then we parent these nulls to the nulls that we already created. And then, you know, these will follow those around. That's a bare bones way to do it. Um, the problem here is that then we'll have to trim paths everything. We'll have a lot of null objects and layers. It works, it's a little messy. I don't love it. So let's see what else we can do. If you have motion three, my favorite extension, there's a tool in here called Vector. So you can grab all this, all a bunch of your layers, create a vector. If you have motion two, it's called rope and create that. That's another way. Or if you like free stuff, there's a wonderful name your own price script from Creative Dojo called Dojo Connector. Grab all your nulls and just hit connect, voila. This creates a nice little web and then you have controls and then we will just animate these as needed. From here, I just animated the parameters until I was happy with how it looked. Not like this, but another way. Moving on to the bubbles and stuff. These are essentially the, a lot of the same layer. Um, CC bubbles with different speeds, amplitudes, sizes and amounts. So let's take a look here, what we're working with. We have a background layer where they're really small and faded back. Mr. Mercury layer, which is attached to the wrist to give it this kind of ghost-like effect. We have uh, another CC bubbles layer attached to the wrist to give it this kind of dripping look. And that's masked on there. Some large bubbles for the background, which are blurred. And masked so that they don't interfere a lot with the action. Then we have some medium bubbles that are sharp and in the mid ground. And then we have some big blurred bubbles in the foreground, which are isolated to be right in the front. Then there's a few more little touches on top that give it a little more believability, I think. So there's a border layer. This has roughened edges with a time expression on the random seed that may dance every frame. And then this also has a ripple effect at the beginning and end of the loop for when the hand breaches the border. I also put this ripple that happens with a displacement map. So how this works is wherever there's this black value of this ripple, the displacement map that's on an adjustment layer references the ripple and affects everything below it. So if I turn on this adjustment layer, you can see how this is starting to affect the border. And I'll go ahead and turn this off. And if I turn on all my other layers, it's subtle, but you can see it affecting everything below it. And I'll really crank this up a lot and you can see it affecting it a lot more. And so I think that subtle ripple helps add a lot to this entrance of the hand in and out. Then I also really wanted this gooey lava lamp effect and you can see it on the edges here where bubbles are kind of morphing into the border. And if I turn it off, 
you can see the difference that it makes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this layer and remake it so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna make a new adjustment layer. And we're gonna apply a fast box blur. And let's put this at maybe, we'll do, we'll do seven, just so you can really see, and repeat edge pixels. And then we also wanna add a levels to it. But we want our levels to affect the alpha. Ooh. Now you can kind of see the morph the morphiness that's happening here. But I want to mask out the areas that I don't want it to affect. So I'm gonna add an ellipse to it, and if I just double click the ellipse, it'll automatically mask to the bound, the bounding areas, and then I'm gonna invert it. So now I have a pretty good mask that's happening, and I'll just go ahead and feather this out to maybe 150, and I'll tweak it so I can maybe have it come in on the bottoms more, and in on the edges, so we can really have things morphing to the border. And now we have this really kind of nice gooey blur everywhere. Nice. So now we need to create our full loop. I have my original composition here attached to a null object, which is gonna slide up and then slide back down. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate my layer and move it over to this slide point. I'm gonna just move the anchor point to the bottom and then flip the layer. And so this should take care of the original flip. And then I'm gonna take the original layer, duplicate it again, and bring it back to this point. Okay, so this is looking about right. And then I'm just we wanna time remap these layers so that we have something happening here and this is going to be still right now but this movement is so fast that it shouldn't really matter you won't be able to tell no one's quick enough they can't see that so now we got to figure out where our loop point actually is so let me give you a little tip let's say we want our loop point to be like right here and this endpoint doesn't really matter we can take a snapshot with this handy little snapshot button. And then when you go back to the beginning and try to match it up, click the eyeball and it's going to show you where that point is. So now we got to find a point where, okay, this thumb is bent and that's sticking out. And that looks like it's right about here. And that's right, that's that frame right here. So we want to go one or one later. Now we play this. And that's our perfect loop. Now one last thing I want to do is I want to change the colors of this middle composition, but I don't feel like going in there and duplicating things and changing the colors. That seems like a lot of work. So let's just add some color changing effects on top, like change to color. And let's take this and change it to white, the hue, saturation, and lightness to white. And let's put an invert on top. And then I'm gonna turn my background back on that I had attached to this off screen the whole time that I forgot about. And then one more thing, turn my texture layer back on that we're not gonna go over in this video because I can't spill all my secrets. That's why you gotta subscribe. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought about this kind of process video. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Leave a comment. Even if you didn't, I'll take all the engagement I can get at this point. Thanks, see you in the next one.